Hello, my name is Marty Windle and welcome to the SBL Guru Podcast. What we're going to do in Season 3 is something a bit different. I realise that students never read ACCA articles. They find it dull and boring to do so. So what I'm going to do in Season 3 is something a bit different. I'll use AI to produce an audio version of the article. Please let me know in the comments if you find this useful and whether it will help you and make it more likely for you to read the article. This podcast focuses on intelligent machines, especially artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robotics. Ever stop to uh, really think about how many intelligent machines you interact with every single day, maybe without even realizing it, like from your smart speaker answering a question or, you know, the traffic app guiding your commute, even that oddly perfect online recommendation. They're just everywhere. Okay, let's unpack this a bit. Today, we're doing a deep dive into the really fascinating, sometimes pretty complex world of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robotics. We've got a stack of insights ready covering what they actually are, where they're being used in some genuinely surprising ways, and crucially, the big ethical questions we all need to think about. Yeah, and our goal today is really to give you a shortcut, you know, a way to get properly informed on this whole landscape, which is changing so fast. We want to help you connect the dots between the tech itself and the impact it's having in the real world. We'll look at the definitions, the applications across different sectors, uh, and that ethical frontier, hopefully drawing out some aha moments. Exactly. Think of it as your guided tour through the cutting edge, tailored for you. So, yeah, get ready for some maybe surprising facts and definitely a few things to chew on. First up, let's try and get our terms straight. We hear AI thrown around constantly. So what is artificial intelligence, actually? It's a great question. And honestly, the definition itself kind of shifts as the tech gets better. But um, at its core... AI is intelligence demonstrated by machines. We're talking about computers developing cognitive functions, Mm. things like learning, problem solving, even understanding, basically systems that can sense their environment and then act to achieve certain goals. It's about actively making decisions, yeah? Mm. Showing that intelligence by analyzing data, figuring out what's relevant, and this is key learning and adapting over time. Okay. And you know, it's not always about like super smart sci-fi robots. Practical definitions often just focus on the task as AI can do now. Behind it all are algorithms. Those are the uh, processes or sequences of steps the computer follows to solve problems, like the instruction manual for thinking. Right, the recipe. Exactly. And what's interesting is how the goalposts move. Things like optical character recognition that used to be seen as AI. Now it's just standard tech, not really intelligent anymore in the same way. That's a really good point about the shifting goalposts. Shows how fast this is all moving. So if AI is the broad idea of machine intelligence, where does machine learning fit in? Is it the same thing? Or? Ah, yeah, that's where it gets a bit more specific. Machine learning, or ML, is actually a subset of AI. It's a specific approach. It uses algorithms to, well, gain experience from data, lots of data, usually called training data. Okay. Think of it like showing a system thousands of examples, say pictures labeled cat or dog. Yeah. Eventually, it learns to tell the difference itself without you explicitly programming rules for every possible feature of a cat or dog. Uh It learns from the examples. So it finds the patterns on its own. Precisely. It establishes relationships or learns to perform tasks based on that data experience. And the key output, often, is prediction. It uses what it learned from past data to make a prediction about new data it sees. And that prediction can then trigger an action or, you know, guide actions to achieve a goal. That makes sense. But it's not just one type of learning, right? Uh, I've heard there are different ways machines actually learn. Spot on. There are different approaches, different paradigms for how machines learn. We usually talk about three main types. First, there's supervised learning. This is like having that teacher, as you suggested. The machine gets training data that's already labeled it, knows the right answers. Right. And human feedback helps it establish relationships between specific inputs and outputs. You see this in um, regression analysis, bioinformatics, mapping, biological stuff, speech recognition, personalized marketing. Okay, so that's learning with labels. What else? Yeah. Then you have unsupervised learning. Here, there's no teacher, no labels. The machine just gets raw data. Its job is to find patterns or structures within that data itself, like grouping customers with similar buying habits without being told what groups to look for. It's about discovery. Finding hidden connections. Exactly. And third, there's reinforcement learning. This one's really interesting, especially when you don't have much training data or the goal isn't super clear. The system learns by interacting with an environment 
trial and error, basically. It gets rewards or penalties for its actions and tries to figure out how to maximize the long-term reward. Like treating a pet, almost. Kind of. It might even take actions that seem bad in the short term if they lead to a bigger reward later. We see this in managing investment portfolios, controlling complex robots, strategy games like chess or Go. Where AI has gotten incredibly good. Absolutely. And uh, we should also quickly mention deep learning. It's a huge field within ML based on artificial neural networks. Expired by the brain, right? Yeah. Loosely, yes. They allow for really complex, nonlinear analysis of unstructured data like images or text, deep learning powers, things like recommendation apps, drug discovery, medical image analysis, language translation. It's incredibly powerful. Okay, so we've got the brains covered AI, ML, deep learning. Now, what about the bodies? Robotics. How do yeah. we define that piece? Right. Robotics. It's essentially about developing machines, robots that can reproduce human actions, often used instead of humans for certain tasks. They usually have, you know, a mechanical structure, electrical parts for power and movement, and then computer code telling them what to do. And they're not all humanoid, like in the movies. Definitely not. Most aren't. They come in all shapes and sizes for specific jobs. A key difference is whether they need a human controlling them directly or if they can operate autonomously. Okay, definitions down. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, I think. These aren't just lab concepts. They're out there changing things. Let's talk applications. Where is AI making waves? Oh, it's, it's everywhere, really. Okay. Take the retail industry. AI isn't just helping sell stuff. It's fundamentally changing the whole customer experience. It's creating this adaptive environment, learning from every click, every interaction you have online, or even in a store, adapting displays, recommendations. It feels like it knows what I want before I do sometimes. Exactly. It's building this continuously developing relationship with the customer personalizing your homepage, using chatbots for conversations, mm. guiding purchasing decisions. It might even analyze facial or audio responses in customer service interactions to gauge sentiment. Wow. And behind the scenes, it's optimizing supply chains, setting prices, targeting promotions based on huge amounts of data about customers, competitors, the market. It's even helping develop new products by analyzing feedback and trying to predict what people will want next. That's quite incredible, the layers of it just in retail. But what about other areas, like, say, medicine? You mentioned that briefly. Yeah, the impact is huge there, too. In medicine and healthcare, AI can analyze massive patient data sets, history, genetics, lifestyle. It's not just about diagnosing illness, but increasingly about prevention, identifying people at high risk before they get sick, prompting interventions. So more proactive healthcare. Exactly. And personalizing treatments based on an individual's specific biology. Then you've got transportation, automatic parking, self-driving tech is advancing, route planning to avoid traffic. Agriculture uses AI for crop and soil monitoring, predicting ripening times. Cybersecurity relies on it to spot anomalies, defend against hacks. Right. Even human resources AI helps sift through candidates, match people to jobs, predict success, and finance. AI supports investment strategies, enables high-speed trading faster than any human. Some portfolios are even fully AI managed now. It's truly woven into so many sectors. Right. But robots are doing some serious heavy lifting too, right? Yeah. Often in places we might not immediately think of. Absolutely. Robots are fantastic for anything needing accuracy and repeatability over and over. It frees up humans for tasks needing creativity or flexibility. Plus, they do jobs that are dangerous or just unpleasant for people handling radioactive materials, disposing of bombs, working in extreme heat or deep underwater. Places humans just can't go or shouldn't. Like in manufacturing. Precisely. Manufacturing is a classic example. Robots mean lower operating costs sometimes, sure, but also incredible precision and reliability. They don't get tired. Think about robot welders. They're more productive, use less material, get a higher yield. They can make welds humans physically can't and avoid safety risks like fumes or flashes. If they were in more efficient. Yeah. And quality control, too. Robots with machine vision using AI can spot tiny defects humans might miss, catching problems early. And you mentioned medicine again, robotic surgery. Yes, that's a growing area. Surgeons use controllers, telemanipulators to guide robotic arms. So the robot does the precise movement. Right. It can mean smaller incisions, less blood loss, less pain for the patient. Even remote surgery is possible. And we're seeing developments in home robotics those smart vacuum cleaners are getting pretty sophisticated, and also in robot learning, where robots learn new skills themselves by exploring or interacting with people. 
But it's not all smooth sailing, presumably. There must be concerns. Oh, for sure. There's the initial cost of the robots, the cost of training people to work with them, and, critically, health and safety when humans and powerful robots share a workspace. That needs careful management. Okay, so these technologies are powerful, truly game-changing. But with great power comes, well, a real need for ethical thinking. The World Economic Forum has slid some critical issues here. What are the big ones? Yeah, the WEF's work on this is really important. They highlight several key areas of concern. First, just the inherent risks and the need for control systems. AI can make mistakes, different kinds of mistakes than humans make. Like it might see patterns and random noise that aren't actually there. Hmm, phantom patterns. Exactly, and there's bias. Because humans create AI and train it on data, AI can inherit our biases or bias can creep into the decision criteria without anyone intending it to. Leading to unfair outcomes. Definitely. And as AI gets more capable, the need for strong cybersecurity becomes even more critical to stop it being used maliciously. There's also the risk of unintended consequences. An AI might achieve the goal you set, but cause negative side effects you didn't tell it to avoid. Because it wasn't part of its objective function. Right. And then the really big long-term question, ultimate control. Could AI become so smart that it resists our control or even tries to control us? It sounds like sci-fi, but it's a serious discussion. Wow. Okay. And beyond control. There are major economic and social consequences. Unemployment is a big one. If AI and robots replace lots of human jobs, what happens to those people? Will there be new roles? How does society support them? A massive societal shift, potentially. Potentially. And related to that is the distribution of income. If AI makes businesses vastly more productive with fewer workers, who gets the benefits? Do the rewards just flow to the owners, widening the wealth gap? Big questions. Are there other ethical angles, too? Yes, definitely. Yeah. The WEF also points to things like AI's potential for influencing human behavior. As these systems get better at interacting with us, could they manipulate us? Think about addictive algorithms in games or social media. It's a bit unnerving. It is. And then there's a really interesting, almost philosophical point about the humane treatment of AI itself. As AI gets more complex, especially with reinforcement learning, using rewards and penalties, mm. does a negative penalty cause suffering in some sense for the system? It pushes our definition of ethics. That is a profound thought. So given all these challenges, bias, control, unemployment, influence, even AI suffering, what can we actually do? What's the framework for navigating this? It's crucial we're proactive, not just reactive. The WEF suggests businesses using AI need a clear ethical framework. It starts with defining AI ethics clearly, aligning it with the organization's overall values, but focusing on AI-specific risks like data privacy and fairness. So building it in from the start. Exactly. Ethics shouldn't be an add-on. It needs to be part of product development right from the beginning. Thinking about limiting data use, protecting data, respecting privacy, getting feedback from customers and stakeholders during development is also vital. Catching issues early. Makes sense. And maintaining a constant awareness of bias, actively looking for it as systems evolve and having ways to mitigate it. And finally, transparency. Explaining what the AI is doing. Yes. Being clear about what data is used, how it's used, why it's used, that builds trust, which is absolutely essential. Wow. Okay. What a journey. We've gone from defining AI, ML, and robotics to seeing how they're changing everything from shopping to surgery and now landing on these really deep ethical questions and potential frameworks. Yeah. And if you step back and connect those dots, it's so clear these aren't just tools anymore. They're actively reshaping our society, our economy, even how we think about intelligence itself. Understanding these nuances is just critical for navigating what's coming. Absolutely. It really makes you reflect on our role, doesn't it? Our responsibility in shaping this future. So thinking back on everything we've discussed, what really stands out to you as you go about your week? Maybe consider this. In a world that's increasingly run by algorithms and smart machines, how do we collectively, individually make sure that human well-being, human values stay right at the heart of how this technology is developed and used? That's the key question. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep making those connections. That's it for this deep dive. Stay curious.
I hope that was useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast and visit season one, which is all about applying the SPL theories in the examination. If you need more help with your exam, get in touch with me at www.sblguru.com and there are all the courses there that I run to help people pass ACCA. Thanks very much for listening and don't forget to comment and tell me how you found the podcast. Good luck in your exam.